Welcome back. Naturally, we've spoken a lot about England and Wales over the last few days, but as the World Cup kicks off today, let's have a look at some of the other European nations. Clinton and Michael are still here, but we need an expert as well, really, which luckily means that Kevin Hatchard is here. Good morning. No pressure. No pressure at all, but impress us over the next 10 minutes. Um, let's start with talking about France, shall we? Um, it sounds a stupid question, given he's the Ballon d'Or winner, but is Karim Benzema's absence more significant than any of the other big-name French players that are missing injuries? Not necessarily more significant, and I don't think it's a massive surprise either because he's had injury problems for Real Madrid pretty much the whole season, lots of, of muscle injuries, and this, I think, they feared. I was told a few days ago that Didier Deschamps was nervous about his fitness. Obviously, they didn't expect something um, so final. But what it does is it brings the old band back together. So you've got Olivier Giroud, who's playing really well for Milan and has done for a long time. It's really important in them winning the Scudetto last season. And we know what record he has for France. It's phenomenal. So you've got the potential of him and Mbappe just off him with Griezmann pulling the strings. That's not a bad Do those two love playing with him? Well, the, the Mbappe thing's really interesting because they had a bit of a falling out before the Euros. Um, and now I think it's come full circle because Mbappe actually made a big fuss about the fact recently that he didn't want to play through the middle. He wanted to play off a target man. Giroud's perfect for that. So he had this big thing on social media, hashtag pivot gang. He wanted to play off this forward pivot. It could work out really, really well for him, I think. They've still got big worries in central midfield. I think Pogba being out is more significant in many ways. Obviously, Conte being out is huge as well. So there's a lot of pressure on young guys like Aurelien Schuermeni to step up and really perform. Yeah, <clears throat> and that was why I asked the question, Clinton, because that, that last World Cup, we, we've, we've discussed it so many times that Pogba seemed to find his best form for his oh, yeah. country alongside Conte. But I also thought Matuidi in that last World Cup yeah, was Blaise excellent. Matuidi, yeah, he, Blaise Matuidi goes under the radar <laughs> because obviously Pogba's the player who gets on the ball makes things happen everyone knows N'Golo Kante but Matuidi done all the hard work he, he enabled those kind of players to go and showcase their abilities so I think their midfield's a, a big struggle that's where I worry for France going forward I don't I don't worry obviously missing Benzema yeah he's a huge blow he's the Ballon d'Or winner he's been out, outstanding over the last few years but I think Olivier Giroud could do ever so well being that link man and you've got Griezmann and you've got Mbappe he's one of the best around but I just worry where the creative spot's going to be in midfield but you can never sleep on France because in the major tournaments they always turn up and I think they'll turn up this um, in the World Cup as well. No, I think Kante is, I think Kante is a big miss. Yeah, I mean, it's probably, it's, this is no surprise for France because he hasn't played regular for, for Chelsea in his time. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one you, you touched on. That. I was going to ask you there, how do you think they will deal without no Pope and no Kante? Well, they're talking about Adrian Rabiot who's a bit of a mm -hmm. divisive figure yeah. in France but he plays at a high level, yeah. at club level with mm. Juventus. He's a divisive figure at Juventus as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but he yeah. has undoubtedly... Yeah. So is his mum, isn't she? She's quite a divisive <laughs> yeah. figure. Yeah. She, she pulls the strings. She's forceful. Yeah, yeah. and that's <laughs> what mums are like. They are, they are. Well, there was a story after they went out of the Euros. Um, she was in the kind of area with the players' parents and she was shouting at Pogba's camp. She was shouting <laughs> at Mbappe's wow. camp. So okay. she's not backwards and coming well, forwards. Well, yeah. Look, I think the, the interesting thing about midfield is going to be how do young guys like Chouameni, Kamavinga, if he's called mm. upon, step yeah. up? We well, know good. that they've mm. performed well for Real Madrid. Real paid a huge amount of yeah. money for both of them. Kamavinga's an interesting one because if you look at the back end of last season with the Champions League and Real Madrid... He had some really big cameos in that run. So he's capable of performing at a high level. There's no doubt about that. Let's talk about the Netherlands. Uh, Louis van Gaal, the, the last stand uh, as a manager. How serious contenders would they be? Well, I think the group is kind because obviously they're in with Qatar and Qatar are a bit of an unknown quantity. They will feel that they can top that group. And they have great quality throughout the team. There's a worry over the goalkeeping position, I think, because they haven't got a... A van der Sar, for example, these days. Houston Bailo might be the first choice. He's a bit hit and miss sometimes. But in defence, there's a possibility Matthias de Ligt might not even get in there. They're stacked in central defence, yeah, aren't they? Because what he will want, I imagine, is Virgil van Dijk in the centre, holding the whole thing together. And he wants guys like Nathan Ake and Yuri and Timber, the Ajax defender, to bring the ball out from the back. So you may well have this bizarre situation where de Ligt can't even get in. Frankie de Jong in midfield is a superb player. There's a bit of a worry over Memphis Depay's fitness simply because he hasn't played really for Barcelona this season. Now, that's a mix of injury and non-selection. 
because Barcelona, you might have heard about it, bought a few players. Did they? No, no, uh, we hadn't mentioned it, actually. This Lewandowski guy who's done OK. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so he struggled to get in. But for the Netherlands, he comes alive. That's his stage. I think he likes being the main man. I think he's always been like that. And with the Netherlands, he's absolutely that. You so... Know you know what I was going to say? Sorry to interrupt you. Wijnaldum, he's not fit, is he? No. Genie went, and that's a huge blow for um, the Netherlands in midfield. Well, the interesting thing about that as well is that he, he's not fit, but also when he was at Paris and wasn't getting a game, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wasn't even getting in squads at, at, at the time because Van Gaal doesn't mess around. He's like, well, if you're not playing... And he said this wow. to a few players. There was talk that Yuri and Timber, when he was being linked with Manchester United... I don't know how true this is, but yeah. it was taught that Van Gaal rang him up and said, look, if you go somewhere and you're not going to play, you're not going to be at the mm. World Cup with me. Okay. So that they were very aware that they needed to try and play with At least he's been open. I think that's, that's the thing as a manager, because you see a lot, of, a lot of countries, a lot of clubs, you're not playing and you're still going to work. Well, there would be England fans who would probably say, let's yeah. have a bit more of Louis Van Gaal's well, that, attitude. That's it. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. But again, it underlines how important Memphis is, because that yeah. criteria simply didn't get applied to Memphis. Yeah. He had to yeah. be part of that squad. Are they, are they one of your dark horses or who is your uh, dark horse? Well, look, I think You're jumping the gun there, Dorse. Calm down. We've got some big hitters <laughs> to discuss first. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, look, I think... <laughs> I just think Netherlands are a team that you talk about the names, but no-one even gives them a, a real opportunity or a chance. But then talk about the players that through the spine of the team. I look at them. I mean, Van Dijk, for me, you build your team around him. The problem they've got is that they could... I mean... It, if spots and maybes, but if they win their group, Argentina win their group, oh, they're yeah. going to clash in the quarterfinals. So that's obviously going to be a big problem. But Van Hull's taken them to the semi finals of a World Cup before. He is the star, really, in many ways, because he does project that aura. You get the sense that they really want to play for him. Yeah, yeah. And I think we've seen with Dutch squads in the past, it hasn't always been that united. Mm. So I think that's an important thing for them going forward. Group E. Two big hitters collide in the group stages. Germany against Spain. Who has the better squad? Oh, what a question. Ooh. What a question. I think Spain are more settled, maybe, because they know exactly how they want to play. They've played that way for a long time. You've got young guys like Pedri and Gavi coming through who've actually played a huge amount of football considering their ages. Poor old Pedri. Play, you know, was just run into the ground because he was such an important player for them and for Barcelona. The question mark over them is, well, there are a couple, actually. Can Alvaro Morata have a hot streak and score the goals they need? I think the other question mark is about defensive lapses because they've got good individuals, although I worry about Eric Garcia. I'm not quite sure the appeal of him at this level. <laughs> and the goalkeeping situation, Unai Simon, brilliant on the ball, plays exactly in the way that Luis Enrique wants, but does make mistakes here and there. For Germany... Hansi Flick going in there as coach, that's a massive step forward for them because they have a set way of playing. It's basically ported over the Bayern way of playing from when he was there. High intensity, high press, put the opposition under pressure. Timo Werner being out has raised a question mark about who plays centre forward. They've got lots of different options. But the one to watch, I think, from the playing perspective, I hope anyway, is Jamal Musiala. He has been, for me, the best player in the Bundesliga. So far this season, scoring goals, making goals, great movement, great awareness of everything around him. He could be a superstar at this World Cup. Uh, amazingly, we've got through a chat so far without talking about Ronaldo, but let's talk about Ronaldo. Portugal, what, what sort of shape are Portugal in? And do you feel that this whole pantomime around Ronaldo might be a bit of a distraction for the rest of them? They're saying it's not, but is it? Look, I think this is a group of players that are used to Ronaldo taking the limelight, <laughs> and used to him being in the headlines. That's been the narrative around Portugal for quite some time. There is a growing call for some of the other excellent attacking players they've got to be given an opportunity. Joao Felix is one. It's been tough for him at Atletico Madrid because he's not always a regular starter. It's not a great fit, but he is lavishly gifted. No question about that. Ronaldo is going to be the, the leader in attack. That, you know, he is the record goal scorer in international Shame football. Jota's not there, isn't it? That is a massive shame because with his movement, with his energy, with his ability in front of goal, he gives them something extra. Their issue is, similar to England in a way, 
everybody says, oh, England have got all these attacking players. Why don't they cram them all in? When you do, it doesn't work. And Fernando Santos is absolutely the same. He's like, look, I have to have a structure. I have to have a balance between attack and defence to whether he can get that right they, or not. They'll be, you know what, Rob? They'll be, I think Portugal will be good. They've got players like Liao, who's been playing ever so well for AC Milan. You look at the fullbacks, Dalo, Cancelo, Mendes, who's been brilliant. They've got options, you know, Portugal, a lot of options. They, they'll, they'll go far in this tournament. There's a few we haven't touched on. This final question, and if you can do it in about 20 seconds, that would be wonderful. But, <laughs> right. but a, a bit of a dark horse who we've not spoken about who from Europe might just surprise us a little bit. We've got to talk about Denmark because they got to the semis of the Euros, largely the same squad. Christian Eriksen, an outstanding player. Great coach in Kasper Hulmand, who's a bit of a national celebrity now in Denmark. They've beaten France home and away in the Nations League. They go into this in great form. One word, who wins the whole thing? Brazil. Beautiful. There you Boring, go. I know. No, it's fine. It's, it's, my, it's my tip as well. So if you say it, it makes me more likely to be right, I think. <laughs> Kevin, thank you very much. Good to see yeah. you this morning.